On January 15, 2022, the Tongahunga Ha'apai volcano erupted and sent a tsunami that raced around the world and a sonic boom that circled the globe twice. This underwater volcanic eruption in the Pacific Ocean was the largest in the history of the world. It was so massive that it displaced a large enough seawater to fill up more than 58,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. According to scientists, the resulting volume of water vapor would be enough to temporarily increase Earth's global average temperature and affect it for years to come. Why did this underwater volcano erupt? What were its effects on humans and the planet? And how does it affect our existence as humans on Earth? Join us in this video as we investigate why the largest underwater volcano suddenly cracked open the Earth. The Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai underwater volcano eruption in 2022 was larger than any other natural explosion in the past century or even any U.S. nuclear explosion. Experts say that after running simulations and gauging pressure changes from broken windows on the surrounding islands, the strength of one of the blast waves is estimated to be about 15 megatons. This is equal to 15 million tons of TNT. It is roughly equivalent to the largest nuclear test performed by the United States. While it caused only four deaths, it rivals the massive Krakatau volcanic explosion near Indonesia in 1883 that took more than 36,000 lives. Sam Perkis, a marine geoscientist at the University of Miami, says, The only way you can make an explosion of this size is with a hydrogen bomb, as this is way off the charts of anything. From a combination of satellite data, field observations, and drone mapping, a team of scientists who were on the ground to observe the effect of the eruption created a simulation of the eruption and resulting tsunami waves. They did this to help fully understand what happened during the explosion. They found that the tsunami waves caused by the volcanic eruption reached 148 feet on one of Tonga's islands. According to Luis Millan, an atmospheric scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, it was unlike anything anyone had ever seen. He led a study that examined the amount of water vapor the Tonga volcano injected into the stratosphere, which is about 8 and 33 miles above the Earth's surface. In the study published in Geophysical Research Letters, Milan and his colleagues estimate that the Tonga eruption sent around 146 teragrams of water vapor into Earth's stratosphere. A teragram is equal to a trillion grams. This amounts to about 10% of the water in that atmospheric layer. From scientific estimates, this is almost four times the amount of water vapor released into the stratosphere in 1991 from the Mount Pinatubo eruption in the Philippines. They analyzed these data from the Microwave Limb Sounder, also known as MLS, on NASA's Aura satellite. This instrument measures atmospheric gases, including water vapor and ozone. After the eruption of Tonga Volcano, the MLS teams began to notice that the water vapor readings were off the charts. Milan stated that we had to carefully inspect all the measurements in the plume to ensure they were trustworthy. It is very unusual for volcanic eruptions to inject water into the stratosphere. NASA has only recorded two other eruptions that did so in the 18 years it has been taking measurements. These two other eruptions are the 2008 Kasatochi in Alaska and the 2015 Calbuco eruption in Chile, but they are only minor incidents compared to the Tonga eruption. The water vapor from both previous eruptions dissipated quickly, unlike the Tonga volcano, which scientists say could remain in the stratosphere for several years. What caught everyone off guard about the Tongan eruption was that it was caused by a volcano that lies under hundreds of meters of seawater. It served as a wake-up call to keep watch on the many other submarine volcanoes in every ocean on the planet. Apart from this, it was a type of eruption the world has never seen before, bewildering scientists and the general public. The Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai volcano was a little-known seamount along a chain of 20 similar volcanoes that make up the Tongan part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Before now, we have sufficient information about surface volcanoes along this ring, including Mount St. Helens in the US, Mount Fuji in Japan, and Gunung Merapi in Indonesia. But little or nothing is known about the hundreds of submarine volcanoes around it. While studying submarine volcanoes is difficult, expensive, and time-consuming, it is no longer a luxury we as a species can afford. According to eyewitnesses who lived on the island and surrounding areas during the volcanic eruption, the first thing that they noticed was the burnt match smell of hot sulfur. 
What followed was a large roar from below the water. The explosions could be heard by people thousands of miles away, with the plume of ash and gas blotting out the sun and even the water vapor casting a dark shadow when viewed from space. Scientists say this eruption shows how dangerous submarine volcanoes can be and their possible effects on us as they are found by their thousands in every ocean on Earth, some perilously close to coastlines. Since the historic eruption, the nations most vulnerable to such occurrences are struggling to monitor and keep tabs on these underwater dragons closely. Experts claim that out of the thousands of such submarine volcanoes in every ocean, dozens of these could erupt under the right circumstances like Hunga. These potential volcanoes and their subsequent eruptions can claim hundreds of thousands of lives and reshape our coastlines. Experts also say that about a million other submarine volcanoes exist globally, with most of them millions of years old and extinct. These, however, are some of the world's least monitored naturally occurring hazards. Only a few easily accessible underwater volcanoes have ever been mapped in detail. Even veteran volcanologists say they know little to nothing about what goes on inside these magma-filled structures between eruptions. The reason for this is very simple. The challenges involved in studying these underwater volcanoes include both cost and logistics. According to reports, the specialized equipment for monitoring these naturally occurring features is very expensive. They are frequently a financial burden to well-funded research organizations, which makes it nearly impossible for developing countries to have them. Also, many of these volcanoes lie across the bottom of the oceans for a long stretch. This means that deploying the instruments can be very arduous. This is possible as it requires a well-trained and dedicated team and a high-tech communication system for real-time data transfer. According to Kenna Harmony Rubin, a professor of geochemistry and volcanology at the University of Hawaii, it is difficult to say which one will be next and when. This lack of clarity and prediction, starkly contrasting human efforts in space and other fields, makes for a scary plot. The Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano formed in early 2015 after a pretty tame volcanic eruption led to the merging of two uninhabited islands into a single landmass. From then on, volcanic activities have become a fact of life for all who live on the islands. Residents are used to the risks of falling ash and ocean swells resulting from shallow water eruptions. However, no one could have predicted the eruption. The Kingdom of Tonga was formerly a British protectorate and is made of about 170 tiny, mostly flat islands, with only about a quarter inhabited. Scattered around this geographic area are 12 active underwater volcanoes, including Hunga. All of these 12 submarine peaks are part of the Kermadec Tonga subduction zone. This zone is where one tectonic plate dives beneath another. This region of active seismicity runs from New Zealand's North Island to the northwestern tip of the Tonga Island chain. The country has about 106,000 residents, with most of these living on the main island of Tongatapu. This is about a 100 square mile atoll, roughly the size of Sacramento. The volcano had been, for the most part, inactive for about seven years until December 2021. This was when people on other islands began to notice small eruptions. Residents of Nukualofa, Tonga's capital city, about 40 miles away on Tongatapu's north coast, claimed to have seen an ash plume from Hunga. Later, sulfur dioxide drifted across Tonga's other island groups, while bursts of steam and ash spilled over the volcano's edge. This continued throughout December but slowed down into the middle of January. On Tongatapu, people sometimes gathered for drinks and watched the volcano bubble. Virginie Dorlay, a French teacher who until recently lived in Nukualofa, said she remembers wondering, is the baby island going to survive? A few days later, a sulfuric odor wafted over the Tongan capital. And then the sky turned another worldly blue and purple, which was the result of fine ash particles scattering the sun's light. Dorlay said, it was gorgeous, but in an impending doom way. Soon, the water along the coastlines of Nukualofa began to retreat, creating whirlpools. Locals immediately recognized this as a sign of a coming tsunami, and everyone freaked out, according to Dorlay. Later, witnesses reported hearing two blasts just around the same time as they saw the plume and before the first sign of the tsunami hit. Then, two more much louder booms were reported. This time, the blast triggered damaging tsunami waves on the western coast and city center of Nukualofa. But then came the last blast, the fifth and the most powerful of them all. 
This last blast was so large that it created a gigantic local tsunami as it displaced large amounts of seawater. According to Perkis, chief scientist at the Khaled bin Sultan Living Oceans Foundation, who helped gather data on the underwater terrain for the model, if you were theoretically at the center of the blast when it occurred, you would have been standing on dry sea floor. Then, a minute later, the displaced wave went from dry sea floor to a height of 85 meters. By the time it got to Tofua Island, the team observed that the wave had fallen to about 45 meters high, although Perkis said it might have been an underestimation. What really happened? What caused the eruption? This was the task of a partnership between a global team of researchers led by Shane Cronin of the University of Auckland and the Tonga Geological Services. Cronin's team found that the Hunga eruption appears to have started with a mixing of different types of magma inside the volcano, which may have caused a rapid gas buildup. It was determined that the Hunga eruption did not follow the conventional ways that volcanoes are known to erupt. Two factors are considered as responsible for the eruption. The first one was the mixing of magma with varying chemical compositions. While it might not appear so to the eye, the contrasts were visible at a micron to centimeter scale. Isotopic fingerprinting using lead, neodymium, uranium, and strontium shows that at least three different magma sources were involved. Using radium isotope analysis, scientists discovered that two of these magma sources were older and resided in the middle of the Earth's crust. Shortly before the eruption, the two were joined by a new and younger one. As these magma interacted, they drove water and other volatile elements out of solution and into gas. This then created bubbles and an expanding magma foam. The result of all this is that the volume of the magma within the confines of the rock began to expand. With this tremendous pressure, the rocks above began to crack, allowing the cold seawater to seep in. The seawater was the extra spice, the second factor for the eruption. As magma was increasingly forced out through the narrow cracks in the rock, about 5 to 10 kilometers below the volcano, there was a sudden collapse of the caldera. The caldera collapse led to a chain reaction because seawater suddenly drained through cracks and faults and encountered magma rising from depth in the volcano. The resulting high-pressure direct contact of water with magma at more than 1150 degrees Celsius caused two massive explosions around 30 and 45 minutes into the eruption. These explosions blew trillions of tons of material straight out through the top of the caldera, some apparently to space. The magma below was further decompressed with each explosion, and the chain reaction continued by amplifying bubble growth and magma rise. After about an hour, the central eruption plume lost energy, and the eruption moved to a lower elevation ejection of particles in a concentric curtain-like pattern around the volcano. This phase of the eruption, while less focused on than others, led to widespread pyroclastic flows of hot and fast-flowing clouds of gas, ash, and rock fragments into the ocean. This caused submarine density currents and damaged vast lengths of the international and domestic data cables, cutting Tonga off from the rest of the world. Tonga went dark for days. The precious cables that supplied the island nation with phone and internet connectivity were severed. As a consequence of the volcanic plume, the country was unobservable from the sky, leaving people around the world worried about the severity of the damage. Here are the words of Sam Mitchell, a volcanologist at the University of Bristol. We couldn't see the impacts on the ground. Was the island just gone? Had the entire population died? Even when the ash cloud disappeared, we didn't know because the undersea cables were severed. The satellite images were coming out, and we still hadn't heard from them. It was traumatizing. The team led by Shane Cronin, in partnership with the Tonga Geological Services, used a multi-beam sonar mapping system to measure the volcano's shape precisely, just three months after the January blast. The result was surprising, to say the least. They found out that the rim of the massive submarine volcano was still intact, but a caldera had formed. The formerly six kilometers diameter flat top of the submarine cone was rent by a hole four kilometers wide and one kilometer deep. A caldera is formed when the volcano's central part collapses on itself after magma is rapidly pumped out. It is calculated that over 7.1 cubic kilometers of magma was ejected. While it is near impossible to imagine, if we wanted to refill the caldera, it would take one billion truckloads. Before now, scientists thought that kind of volcano could only produce a big tsunami if a side of a caldera collapsed. This was something new to them. Cronin says that underwater volcanoes are more diverse in behavior and in some cases 
more capable of extreme behavior than anyone thought. On the other hand, volcanologist Melissa Scruggs, a researcher at the University of California at Santa Barbara, and her colleagues sought to understand what caused the initial blasts. They proposed what they call a magma hammer. This is when magma rushes up and hits the volcano, then drops back down into the magma chamber and repeats this several times. Scruggs said the sudden rise of magma was caused by a sudden drop in pressure, which was observed in the seismic record at the time of the largest eruption. She claims this seismic signature isn't common to volcanic eruptions and that their scientific instruments have never recorded such a signature. Selafai Tangane, a 30-year-old teacher and mother of two, was walking through a wooded part of Tonga's Nomuka Island when the tsunami hit. As she emerged from the tree line, she saw friends and neighbors running inland. People were shouting frantically, some of them carrying children in their arms. The ocean was fast chasing after them. By now, the road was already flooded with water from the sea. She scrambled into her car with her husband, newborn baby, and four-year-old son, and headed for high ground. As they traveled away from the coastlines and towards high ground, Faitangane heard more booms that left a ringing in her ears. They could only watch in terror as a wall of water overwhelmed their neighborhood toppling houses. The sky grew darker. Ash rained down. Faitangane and other Nomuka residents sheltered on a hillside. When they ran out of clean water for making baby formula, Faitangane had to hand her infant daughter to another mother to breastfeed. She said, On that day, we thought it was the end of the world for us. What surprised many people was how the death doll did not match the magnitude of the eruption. With the magnitude and the length of the eruption, People expected to see a death toll that would probably match that of the Krakatau, where about 36,000 people died. According to Perkis, this saving of lives should be credited to the quick response from the community and the low number of tourists in the area because of the coronavirus pandemic. Also, the main city in Tonga is sheltered behind an island in a lagoon, which protects it from an incoming tsunami. Perkis said, This was a very serious event, but won't be remembered in the same way as Krakatau but that's a good thing. The severity of the devastation in Tonga has renewed focus on the dangers of underwater volcanoes worldwide and has sparked questions about which one might be next to blow. And with them found in thousands in every ocean, we urgently need to increase our monitoring systems. According to David Clegg, a volcanologist at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute in California, the current state of monitoring is simply that almost none are monitored at all. He says, this lack of monitoring is not neglect, but simply that there are many such potentially active submarine volcanoes, and even a single seismometer is expensive to install and to maintain. Like Lisa Lafolo and his son, who clung to a mangrove tree for 27 hours while the eruption and tsunami were on, all we can do now is hope and wait. And where our usual practice of throwing money at problems might have worked in the past, it will fail woefully. We can only painstakingly carve a way out to survive if and when the next underwater volcano hits the planet. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos like this one.